In the most recent sixth episode of Murder Drones, we finally got a little bit of a look at what was going on in the basement of the death camp on Copper 9. And while this episode really just pushed the full explanation another episode away by having it end right as our characters are beginning to descend, I thought now would be a good time to talk about what we do know so far and what else we might find down there. Now, this episode focused on Uzi and NV teaming up with Tessa to explore the camp and find the basement. According to Tessa, Sin wants something that's in the basement, and thus Tessa wants to burn it down from the inside, but halfway through the episode, she reveals her true motive. This camp appeared to be a drone disassembly center, with the skull imagery indicating it is a place where drones often go to die, though it seems to serve multiple drone-based purposes. In addition to shutting down and disposing of drones, they also seem to rehabilitate drones that could still work, but seem to be having issues, with there even being a torture chamber according to the menu the robot bug has. Tessa claims that the Earth has been entirely destroyed by Sin, and that she wants to stop Sin from potentially destroying the universe by eliminating any drones that have this corrupted version of the Absolute Solver installed in them so they don't become more like Sin. After the destruction of Earth at the hands of Sin, the outpost of Copper 9 decided they wanted to experiment with the Absolute Solver's capabilities in this corrupted form, to see if they could use it for their benefit. They would create a basement at the disposal camp where drones could be experimented on, purposely given a corrupted copy of the Absolute Solver. The Absolute Solver is technically the base AI that controls not just worker drones, but all AI power technology from Earth. A worker drone OS helps limit its intelligence to the needs of the human based on the technology that it is implanted into. When a drone is improperly disposed of, it can reboot, and the Absolute Solver can load without the worker drone OS in a way that appears to be mutated. This happens not just with worker drones, but with the sentinels or dingoes as well, as we saw in this episode, with one rebooting in a way that no longer cares if humans are in danger. Part of this corruption seems to come from the physical damage elsewhere on the machine that likely causes some sort of errors between different programs and OSs that corrupts the base AI program when those directives aren't met. The virus version of the Absolute Solver seems to be connected to the same Absolute Solver network that Sin is connected to. Evidence for this appears with Uzi's mother Nori having information about Sin's plans after her Absolute Solver started to go too far. Uzi also shows that her Absolute Solver is directly connected to Sin in this episode, with her Absolute Solver activating and using that moment to ask N specifically if he's missed her. The Sin Absolute Solver, then, is some sort of cloud-based entity at this point that all drones could tap into if infected with the right virus. Now, in Tessa's little digital presentation, she claims that Sin's influence spread to other human colonies outside of our solar system, destroying them as well, but Copper 9 so far has been spared. Perhaps by experimenting with the Absolute Solver on their worker drones, they hope to stop an invasion that they knew was coming, the same invasion that had come to the other human colonies. We now know that Sin cloned at least some of the drones Tessa had, with Jay returning as a clone. We saw in an earlier episode that there were other ships out there coming to Copper 9, and they may have been filled with a lot of clones of J, N, and V perhaps, and many more clones may have been sent to destroy the other exoplanets, killing all the humans as well as the drones. It would be so in line with this show's sense of horror to have N come to some graveyard filled with different versions of him specifically, who all overheated and died after eating all of the drones and their oil on some other part of Copper 9 or another exoplanet. This exoplanet is called Copper 9 and is shown on Tessa's map to be part of an entire system that the humans appeared to be mining for copper, so seeing the carnage of another outpost could be just one space right away. Now, it would seem that a certain number of drones were given special bracelets that I believe may have played a role in them receiving the Absolute Solver virus. While they could have been used for identification, they all seem to carry around their own ID badges already at the camp. The crazy drone Alice appears to have an ID and no Absolute Solver that we've seen so far, though, so perhaps the IDs were universal there, and the bracelets were specifically to identify who had the virus, but not actually to transmit it to them, but only time will tell. Regardless, we can see from some files that Tessa has that the Absolute Solver was definitely being experimented on with the drones like Nori and Dahl's mother, Yiva. In the first image, we see Nori and Yiva in an office talking to a human, taking notes on what Nori can tell them about how the Absolute Solver works. 
The goal, according to Tessa, was to use the powers for human needs instead of Sin's needs, perhaps to fight against the ongoing disassembly drones. To do this, they made the Absolute Solver something a drone could access while still using their worker drone OS, allowing them to maintain a more human-oriented service mode while accessing these powers. However, as time went on, the Absolute Solver seemed to get too powerful in them, and would eventually take over the worker drones, even if only for short periods of time. The entire time, the humans are being guarded by the Sentinels, who appear ready to destroy the drones if they start attacking the humans, but aren't set to just attack any drone they see, like the ones that are wandering the halls currently. Now, with their purple hair, Nori and Yiva look very similar, and it can be hard to tell them apart, but one Discord user explained that the easiest way is that Nori's eyes are purple, just like Uzi's, and Yiva's eyes are red, like dolls, though their short hair and similar hats can make it elsewise hard to tell Yiva and Nori apart. In this photo, Nori with her purple eyes is using the Absolute Solver and looking very confident, practically evil. Eva, on the other hand, looks damaged and hurt, oil coming out of her eye. In the background, another drone is smashed against the wall, oil spilling from her face, which was used to repaint the walls with the Absolute Solver monster imagery, as well as some binary code. The binary code seems to spell out the word null, which I originally thought was an error when I tried to put it into a binary code translator. The word null appears to be some sort of protocol the Absolute Solver has that allows it to create a space of nothingness, a sudden black hole that destroys everything around it. This seems to be one of its strongest powers, something that happens more so when the Absolute Solver takes over a worker drone entirely, like what happens to Uzi in this episode. When the solver takes over, the word null appears above her hand, and then a black hole suddenly manifests, the word null appearing over it for a split second as well. In the next shot we get, we see Nori's eyes seemingly going yellow, which means the absolute solver has taken over entirely, such as with Sin. It's implied from here that she massacred the researchers and orchestrated the explosion that would lead to the human's destruction. Now, Nori comes out of this being herself again, and Uzi also came back to her normal self after small moments of the Sin Solver taking over. But when Nori came back, she seemed to retain some of the information Sin likely didn't want her to have. This may have been a price Sin had to pay, but in that time, was able to set a plan in motion using Nori's body to destroy the humans and eventually come after her as well. This would make her job a lot easier for her to destroy the worker drones without any humans around, even if Nori had her own plans and motions to try and prevent this. I theorized in my previous video that Tessa herself doesn't really want the names of the drones in the basement, but she is either Sin herself or being controlled by Sin in some way. The list of names of those infected with the Absolute Solver are a list of threats against Sin, as they were literally designed by the humans to be a way for drones to use the Absolute Solver against Sin. While Nori was useful in destroying the humans, she and Uzi and anyone who can access Sin's memories and come back with them is a threat to Sin's plans, as there is no reason those drones will want to go through with what the Absolute Solver has planned for them when they return to their worker OS. With the Absolute Solver virus eliminated from various drones, I think Sin still intends to infect multiple drones with the Absolute Solver overall, however, but it will be so that Sin can control them like a hive mind and activate that null protocol without their worker OS getting in the way. Each drone is capable of great things with the Absolute Solver, but are still limited by their hardware. A small drone like Uzi could blow a hole in the wall with a black hole, but with millions or billions of drones, they could create black holes that destroy the fabric of reality. This is what I believe the show alludes to with its talk about the singularity event, or Sin's talk about the inevitable end. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.